Now time to turn our attention to the quarterfinals and our first one. The favourites for the competition, England up against Australia, who we just saw come through against South Africa in dramatic fashion a couple of matches ago. Aaron Davies out there for England. Not the best of breaks he's ever hit. Joining me on commentary for this one, another ultimate pool professional enters the day here on Free Sports. Chris Day, great to have you here, Chris, and you're in for a big match. Yeah, yeah, I can say uh, thanks, thanks very much for having me, and um, thanks for giving me this match to commentate on first, mate, because this is uh, one of the better ones of the day, I think, especially um, given the fact I used to play with a lot of these guys in the England team, so I'm really looking forward to um, seeing how they get on. There must be part of you that is a little bit jealous you don't get to be out there and, and experience this drama but you'll be impartial in the commentary box but behind them I'm sure yeah well um yeah I'm, I'm a bit disappointed obviously I'm not out there playing as anyone would be when you see a great event put on like this but um you know I'm involved I'm here I'm here commentating with you so um yeah I'm happy with my involvement mate and I'm I'm really looking forward to the game because Australia uh, this is the sort of game that y you see all they're going to be bang up for, which you can already hear. Well, it's uh, it's the old battle, isn't it? England, Australia. Doesn't matter what sport we're looking at, it's always big. And Paul Clack gets to the table for Australia. Yeah, they've never been shy in coming forward in the past World Championships, this Australian team, so I expect, uh, I expect them to be very vocal throughout. I expect any, any miss or twitch from the England team to be ferociously cheered by the men in yellow. Yeah, they've won the World Team Championships a couple of times, and they're going well again this week. They look certain to be in the knockout stages. Happening in a couple of days' time. But for now, all their focus is on the World Team Shootout. So far this week, England have been, they came here as the dominant team. They have been the dominant team through the past 20 odd years. And they are going to be favourites for this competition. They've cruised through the week so far. But in this format, it's a real test. If you're just joining us, 14 minute matches. It's a 14 frame match, so essentially a race to eight, but of course draws are possible. For the first 30 minutes, it is 30 seconds a shot, and then we're down to that dreaded 15 seconds a shot for the final 10 minutes. Why do you say dreaded, Simon? That's the bit we're looking forward to, surely? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure the, the players are so much. <laughs> but from what we've seen so far, you have to say, you know, it's a 14 frame match, but we're not getting super deep into these matches. 7-2 you know, the first match, Northern Ireland versus France, then 6-5 six six South Africa and Australia. So 11 frames there, 11, 9 in the previous one, and then Belgium managed to win 8-2, but with the uh, only a couple of seconds remaining. So I think yeah. it, it puts more weight on each frame is what I'm sort of getting at. Definitely, yeah, it's a different pressure to team game, isn't it? Because um, the shot selection does change when you're playing in the team. You know, you're, you're less likely to push the boat out because um, if you're playing a singles match and you've got the choice of attack or defend, you know, you, you have to basically live with that decision and the consequences. Whereas in a team, um, it's not just you that it affects, so you're much more likely to choose the defensive side of it just because you don't want to let your team down, really. Yeah, it does make you think some strange things out there. What a shot. What a shot from Aaron Davies. That was massive. That really was. And it, it really worked out for him as well. That red looked like it was going to hang, but it drops in. And now, all of a sudden, a chance to win this opening frame. Yeah, excellent vision from Aaron. We know he wants to be aggressive out there, and um, yeah, he just just had the chance to be, and um, now it looks like he's he's got his chance. He would have loved that yellow to stay right over the pocket, so he could take the one to the top, use the one at the bottom to get onto the eight ball. Now he has to play a shot. He does have a window, but he still needs to execute. Oh, 
But he misses, and I've been saying this all morning long. There is something about Team Paul, and especially Team Shootout Paul. It doesn't matter who you are and what you've achieved. Nothing is easy. Highlighted there by Aaron Davies, because he missed that by a long way. And he is normally so clinical. Yeah, and you've got to say added pressure going first in one of these events as well. So, um, yeah, leading your country out. Yeah, just making sure he takes these these reds in the right order here. He wants to leave the one bottom left to last for easy access to the eight ball. Found a great angle with the cue ball off the cushions just to play for a big margin of error and uh, should be lovely on the eight. Just the start the Australians would have wanted, Simon. It is now Paul Clack gets the first frame on the board. The Aussies are in front. You need Mike Mike King up next for, for the England guys. You need him to um, just go out and try and play as positive a frame as he can just to try and get that first frame sort of uh, out the way if possible from England's point of view. Well, he's going to get the opportunity. Dry break for the Aussies. Yellow on the left-hand side there. That's the problem for Mike. You want to see more team events from Morton McPaul going forward, Simon? Yeah, I love team events. I don't know what they've got planned and... I'm sure they have big plans because they always have, but yeah, it's uh, absolutely would be fantastic to see more. I would love it too, yeah. Think about the drama of it. Well, Mike tries to develop that yellow and he hasn't. Maybe commentators feed pros. <laughs> ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, this is the WPF World Team Shootout, but Ultimate Paul, working with the WPF, has sponsors. Great to see collaborations like that in the game, bringing the pool world together. Fairly sure that uh, Mike meant that you know to cover the red on the side there. Oh, what a double! Picked one out there, and that's landed nicely. Can have landed better, could it? No, can he? If he can just come back and develop the the red, that's a, a bit of an issue. Good chance for two 0 I mean, I know we um, you always uh, common well mention that you have trouble with these camera angles, but it looks like that might drop in the middle of that red. Yeah, I'm, oh well, I'm sure it will drop in the riddle. It's just delicate, isn't it? You can see from that angle how delicate it is. And now it's marginally better. Much better, yeah. Not just because you've moved it an inch to the right, but also the yellow's just gone out the way, which just helps getting to it nicely. Yep, and he's noticeably sped up as well around the table here. He thinks the job's done, and he's missed the red. Oh, the job is not done. And look where the red's gone as well. So there's one problem ball on the table here. But it's not that big a problem with where the red's gone. Yeah. One on the left-hand side, it can now help the pot. That was a big moment. Had a big moment from Aaron previously in the first frame. Potentially a chance for England to get one back. Yeah, and in a team event, it's a big momentum shift because, um, you know, if, if, uh, if Mike were to take these out, all of a sudden England are feeling really good about one all and Australia are feeling quite flat about it. Yeah, it's a really good point. It's how you get there sometimes, it's how you feel. Well controlled and comfortable eight ball for Mike King and get England on the board. 
And they are on the board, all square now. And he's going for the cut break. Where's the eight? Where's the cue ball? If the eight ball was moving, cue ball was moving. They both stay on the table and he gives himself an opportunity. Do we have golden breaks in this time? Yeah, time? golden breaks are in operation. And the golden ducks and the six red shootouts. <laughs> it's worth pointing out, as this match is tight right now, if the match finishes tied after the 40 minutes run out or we get to 7-7, we will be going to a six red shootout. And the reason I'm mentioning the fascinating thing for me is the, the teams have to nominate a primary and a secondary player for the six red shootout because it will be scotch. The right. primary player will play with a secondary player of its 7-7. If the match finishes at, say, 6-6 six, six or 5-5, five, five, it's the next player on that will play with the primary player. So wow. it does add some drama to who's potentially in the shootout. And I would love to know, and we haven't been given that information, which players these teams have picked, because they will have to have already nominated. Who would you nominate from this England squad? I think Carl Sutton might be I, I high on the list. I He's very good at you. it. I can tell you who I wouldn't have nominated, if that helps. <laughs> and it starts with Shane and ends in Thompson. Well, he's been in a lot of them. He has a lot of experience, of course. The ultimate ball number one, Shane Thompson. He is scheduled to be on, well, he will be on, in two frames time. Yeah, I think they might have gone for um, Carl, Carl Sutton and Mike King, perhaps. The two are the two very naturally quick players. They see shots quickly, they see angles, and they can, they can pop balls really quickly, which obviously stands you in good stead in the six red. Um, on the Australian side, you would say probably Jake must be one of them with the experience he has. Yeah, you would think. Right, before we get there, Carl has just put himself under pressure for this eight ball. This is not a certainty. He's gone for the double because of it, and he's missed. Big error from the ultimate pool star. Looked like he was going to run through for a lovely break clearance. And as I'm going to keep saying it, and I'll say it all day, nothing is easy out there for these players it is so different to anything they have played before shootout ball is one thing but for your country is a whole nother deal yeah even in these early stages you can start to feel the tension in the air can't you David Ewing now chance to get the Aussies back in front This is one of the big things I miss about um, about team sports at this level, Simon, is the fact that uh, when you're playing singles and you're just walking around the table knocking balls in, there's not really anything going on. But when you're in a team, you can put the easiest ball in the world and you'll get a big cheer for it from the rest of your teammates. And there's no better feeling. That's one of the, the big things, is that team spirit. How much support you get backing each other up. It's one of the things I'm actually fascinated to see with the England team because they've been so dominant in the World Championships that they don't tend to go as big early as other countries. So I'm interested to see how big they go in their support of their teammates today in the shootout. Yeah, it has been the case with, uh, the, with the England guys that you tend to see them support more when it gets down to the nitty gritty, when they feel like they need it. Um, other than that, they sort of let each other get on with it in the early rounds. Yeah, and they've sort of cruised through the tournament to this point. So well, we'll see what happens, especially if they get put under it here by Australia. And right now they are, as we have played our, almost our first 15 minutes. Yeah, and he's left a great couple of balls till last now because uh, it's all about natural angles. Just drop this one in. He's got the natural angle to, to pot this yellow in the right-hand corner and he should land plumb behind the black, really. It's just about pace control. Ideally, he doesn't want to leave himself welded to the top cushion, so I'd be playing to, to hit the top cushion here and, and guarantee yourself a easy queuing. And he agrees. David Ewing punishes the mistake from Carl Sutton. Beautiful counter clearance, never in doubt. 25 minutes left on the clock. Every time you get it, this feels like a swing frame all of a sudden. 
Australia go 3-1 up. That clock is going to start to run away from England. They'll, they'll look at it. I mean, they, I know a lot of them are used to the, the clock situations. They know 20 minutes is a long time. Yep. But it, it will start to really, it will feel like it's going twice speed for them. And the pressure for them to win the next frame is huge. Yeah, not only win it, but win it quickly, potentially. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, but yeah, I mean, Jake, Jake's at the table now. He's got his chance. One of his great mantras is pressures for tyres, isn't it? Let's see if um, that sticks when he's playing for the team. Yeah, pressure for tyres. He loves to say it, but he did miss a, a fairly comfortable eight ball in their win over South Africa. So I'm not having it. He's not feeling the pressure out there playing <laughs> for his country. He's just got that nudge wrong. He didn't want the uh, the red he was nudging to be in the way of the yellow to the middle there. He always felt it was going to go that way. I think he obviously felt that he was flicking a bit thinner off the yellow and it wasn't going to get there, but he's still, still got another shot. And that opens the eight ball up. He's not great on his next ball, but he is on his next ball. This is a tough clearance he's taking on. You don't feel like there's a big gap to get on the next ball from this this yellow that he's obviously got to take. Well, he can take it in the corner or the middle. You'd feel almost maybe that he'd probably want to take it in the corner just to get the cue ball down the, the bottom end of the table. Will it pull up? Needs it to pull up. Just ran too far, I think. I'm not sure he has a shot on at all here. Not a lot I can see. I mean, perhaps yellow onto the yellow in the in the triangle, off the red and in the middle. But um, ultra aggressive, obviously. So just the safety shot from the big Aussie. England bow back at the table. Yeah, and um, he's asking a question of, of Giuseppe. At least um, from Jake's point of view, his three yellows are much more accessible now. That wasn't easy. It wasn't easy under the pressure they're feeling out there. Delicate one, but let's Jake back to the table and he has a couple of pot options here and as you said Chris his balls are laid out better now oh disastrous little flick for Jake if it slides by it he's okay if he catches it a hair thicker he's okay Another chance gets away from Jake McCartney. Really getting close towards the halfway mark now in the match clock and we're only into frame four. Every frame is massive. Yeah, and you feel if you're England that this is a, a really, really good opportunity. You sort of, um, nothing, nothing is ever certain in, in the team game, but you're almost chalking this one up at the moment, I think. I have news, we were talking about the primary players for the six red shootout and we got it right. Carl Sutton will be the primary for England, Jake McCartney for Australia. Can't, I can't really surprise at that, Carl's got a great six red record and Jake's the only player in the Australian team that will have competed in one. Yep. Just doing a few extra miles with the cue ball than he would have wanted here, Giuseppe. Well, he decided to play the cannon. He got a little bit fortunate there and he 
He acknowledges that fortune. He wanted a full ball can uh, cannon just to knock it towards the corner rather than what he got, but he'll take it. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. And we're all square once again. About to get us back underway in this world team shootout battle between England and Australia. Poised at 2 2, with only 20 minutes left on the match clock. It is a 14 frame match, but I don't think we're going to get 14 frames in here. Well, if we keep getting breaks and splits like that, we might do, Simon. Yeah, big from the number one. And look at this layout. Rattle but drops. You feel like if he just gets this cue ball out on the next shot, it's pretty much frame done. Straight in on the one to the top right in two shots time and it's uh, over for him really. Yep. And um, this is where someone like Shane has always been really precise with his cue ball. It's what's taken him to number one, isn't it? It's just yeah. that, that control of that cue ball simplifying the game. Yeah. Well, he's got more angle here than he wanted, so he, he can't just track to the middle of the pocket, uh, middle of the table, because he can't risk going right side as straight. So he's having to work harder here. Yeah, looks like he's playing for a choice of two. And that's perfect. He'll take that. Brilliant shot choice from Shane because if he if he did hit that sort of six inches too hard, he was on the other one to the middle, and uh, no dramas at all. Yeah, and probably always had that vision from the start, rather than that needing that precise positional shot that I threw out there. It's yeah. play that area where, you, especially when you're transitioning from bottom to top, where you've got that margin. Yeah, I certainly would have been playing it the way you've seen it, and um, probably missing. That's why we're here, Chris. That's why we're <laughs> we're here and not out there. <laughs> He was a little bit short of straight on that one. He had to spin that one in just to flick off the yellow to make the eight ball as comfortable as he, he possibly can. It's still a little stretch over the yellows here. But of course it goes in. And the reason I mention it is because obviously he's a big part of Ultimate Pool. But he is involved in this match, but he has not been selected for play here. He has been left on the bench. Oh, he may well be dropped in the cold. He may well be drafted in for the second half of the match after seven frames are played. So what happens is the teams put down their first seven names, and they have you have to have a, a team of seven. Yep. Then after seven, you can then pick your second list of seven, as in you. So you can bring in your subs, and I know for England they've got a, a squad of ten. And uh, Lee Kendall, and I, the reason I mention it is just simply because he's heavily involved in, in putting together shootout ball, and I would love to have seen him out there at 15 seconds a shot running around. We, we may well yet. yet to get to see it, but right now he's not scheduled to be. We knew he wasn't going to be the primary for this <laughs> shootout as well, didn't we? <laughs> and it was his invention. Yeah. Okay, Alex Pace for Australia here. Now they're behind for the first time, need to find something. And they have a good chance. That was a lovely shot sliding across the table. And just to mention, for anyone who's um, ever seen any darts action before in the past, um, Shane's celebration at the end there was because one of his nicknames in the England team is um, Michael Van Gerwen. So he was giving it the MVG. He was giving it the MVG boom. Love that. That's why we get you here, Chris. That little bit of inside knowledge. I love it. One shot to play here for Alex. Can he get down on the one at the bottom of the table? It goes right centre and bottom left corner, but not easy to get nicely on it. Yeah, it just wants to be just off straight um, below this for this yellow in, in the middle, and then he should have enough room to, to come through the gap in the middle of the table and top on and off the cushion down here. All about the pace control here. So that's 
slight bit of deceleration on that one, you think, or is he happy? Well, I wouldn't imagine that's where he went. No, it just doesn't look right, does it? He's got options. I mean, it looks like he's going to be cannon in the red um, that's sort of near the blue spot. Um, and it depends which side he, he wants to cannon it, because obviously he can try and cannon it thin to the left as we look and be on the, the yellow in the middle, or he can try and cannon it to the right and be on the red in the bottom left corner. He's ended up hitting it quite full. Yeah, now in a spot of bother. Yeah, I mean, cut or double for you here. I think I like the double because you can control the cue ball. Like yourself, more importantly. You're the player. Probably fancy cut, pro yeah. probably fancy getting the cut more than I would the double, in fairness. He's gone for the cut and he's overdone it. The red going in off doesn't matter. It is just loss of turn. Adam Basut now at the table. Adam's been playing great this week as well for Team England. He really has. Yeah. Starting to see some of the best of him this week. Had a really good run in the Masters as well, didn't he? Yeah. The reason I mention it, he's had a disappointing year as a first year professional on the Ultimate Ball Pro Series. Um, but really showing what he can do here this week. And I hope he can take that into the Pro Series at the end of the year. Plays the tactical shot. Great effort that, had to play that with quite a bit of side, just slide by it, but he was trying to pot it, so that's why he's ended up missing it. Yeah, and if he wants to, he can develop the really hard red on the, on the right-hand side of the table and just leave um, Team Australia in a bit of trouble over the side, same side of the table again. Um, depends whether he's feeling aggressive or not, really. Surely with cue one hand, he has to deal with that red on the right. Yeah, now he comes back to have a look at it. Extra 15 called for. Is he going here? It looks like it. Big shot. Big shot. Yeah. And he misses. And he leaves the yellow on. Favoured the double over the pot down the cushion. That could be a massive moment we could be looking back at in 13 or 14 minutes time. Needs a kiss. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> he has a shot, but it's horrible. Well, there's a lot of in off here if he tries to cut this in the corner, isn't there? That middle pocket will be looking massive to him right now as he looks at that angle, I think. In the end, had to rush it as well. Hasn't done much damage, though. Mm -hmm. Left this really tricky for Adam. We may see him just play safe after the last double he took on. Very simple snooker, and he's got it really well as well. There was a chance when he played that shot he could leave a one cushion. He stopped the one cushion, which is quite, quite important for him. Yeah, as you say, a, a simple snooker to lay, but um, he's he's played it, you know, as, as well as you can, really. A foul's been called. We just missed the exact uh, moment there as he hit the ball because he was in the way, but he hit the eight ball and then didn't hit a cushion afterwards, which you have to do, even when you're snookered in international eight ball rules. And now Anabasu can go with a nice clean chance. Might even be taking all five of his reds in the same pocket here, Simon. Yeah, why not? Training exercise. Yeah. There's a routine in there somewhere. Just come a little bit short here, so um, he might be, might be forced into playing a bit of a cannon. Just going to have to accept what he has here and pretty much leave the cue ball. Not far from where the red is now. But he misses the red. Huge, huge moment. 
Adam Masu does not want to win this frame. Let's Australia off once again. Yeah, and these are always tough when you're queuing across the table with the nap. You've got to get a good a good hit on it without hitting it too hard. It's a great shot. Alex Pace gets the Aussies back on level terms. It's going to be doing so under a, a shorter clock quite soon as well, aren't they? Well, absolutely. In about 30 seconds time, we're going down to that 15 seconds a shot. Yeah, so very important here to take the time, I would say, to, to map, make sure you, you, you map your route because, um, you know, after this first couple of shots, you, your time's going to come right down to 15 seconds. You're going to need all the time you can. Well, Tro Troy Rudling misses his first pot when the frame was there. That was opening everything up. Yeah, it looked it, like he rushed slightly, didn't it? I mean, this is... These are great ball players out there, and they are all feeling the pressure. Absolutely all of them. There's just something about shootout pool, as we see our referee, Scott Price, announce the 15 seconds a shot. There is something about shootout pool that puts the players, and it doesn't matter how good you are, under humongous pressure. Nothing I love more than watching sport when players are under it and seeing if they can come up big. Right now, Eddie Barker is trying to do just that. A little bit more angle there than he wanted and was able absolutely to die that yellow into the pocket to hold good position. Yeah, I think he's just off straight here, so a nice firm cannon into the other yellow, pushing it towards the right centre. Yeah, and that helps when, with a connection to the eight ball as well. He can now pick his angle. Yeah, I mean, the red to the left of the eight ball, as we're looking on the screen there, will be looking massive. Um, as you mentioned, when you're under a little bit of pressure, these things do come into your head. That red will be looking like a beach ball at the moment. Eddie will be wishing it wasn't there to make life a lot easier for him. So he's just got the decision. Do I try and come inside the red or do I risk uh, going round it? You just don't plan into it. Yeah, I think that's the way. Just like that. Very calm here from Eddie Barker. He's showing nothing. Just calmly floating through the finish. And he turns around and gives it to his team. England back in front. It looks like it's going to be Carl Sutton next up for England we're still waiting this is the moment where the teams can change their order this is the the moment with 4-3 with seven frames in well, Australia have made their decision it's going to be Jake McCartney bringing the big gun straight out Jake McCartney will be breaking as well and he always says when we have him in the commentary box, he's the best player in the world at going in off his break. That would be a disaster here because he's up against Carl Sutton. Well, he's not going to go in off. He's made a ball and he has a good chance here. What do you think, Chris? There's a pretty Come even on, chance, although he probably can't yeah. pot a yellow, so he has to go reds. I think you probably want yellows, but you can't see one, so you're forced into reds. And um, as second options go, it's not the worst, is it? No. There's almost a, sort of one ball each, and yellow maybe below the eight ball. May have made him go reds anyway, but then you've got the red nearest the bottom right-hand corner. And it's not a terrible ball, it's just no. that's the one. You saw there at the Jake's first shot, it almost caught him out because uh, we are at 15 seconds a shot, and the previous frame he played was at 30. Yeah, and you've also got to take into consideration that 15 seconds a shot, Jake wouldn't have a lot of time to plan and map a route. He'll be, he'll be conscious that he knows uh, uh, you know, a general way to get there, but that eight ball, you, you'd probably need to leave the ball over the, the left corner last for the eight ball in the right centre, because it doesn't seem to go anywhere else. He's tried to get the yellow off the table on, to open up the pocket for it. Come on, Jakey. Come on, mate. Teammates trying to get him going here. Come on, 
Now it's got an angle, more angle is good here in this situation. Should be able to set a trace of right hand side on this and float down the right hand side of the table. Just going to pull up a little bit short, he had the side on. He was conscious there that the harder you hit that, then the, the more it's not going to take. He allowed that spin to take, it just needed it to drift another few more revelations. Revolutions, I should say. The eight ball does go in this corner. Oh, what a pot. And Jake McCartney comes up big for Australia. Wow, what a finish. Since the WPF World Championships were held. Okay, over to Shane Thompson. Last time at the table, a break clearance. And he has another opportunity. Yeah, not as good an opportunity as last time by the looks of the balls. He's got work to do. And again, I think he wants to be red, so I'm assuming he might be able to see that. Yeah, he can see that red fine. So um, He still has one to deal with. Yeah. Might be a three ball plant if he can drop this one in the middle. Looks like you've called it. That's what he's walked round to have a look at. Five minutes, 40 seconds on the clock here. Big favourites for this tournament are bang under it. Shane Thompson trying to come up big for England. Yeah, and couldn't play this with a lot of control as well because the angle for the red that he's hitting first um, will go towards the, the bottom left corner as we look. So he'll probably be on that ball next as long as he controls the pace. That's brilliant. And one thing as well, you, you notice there, he didn't try and play on the ball he was moving. He gave himself a choice of two at the top, and he always thought he'd have a third at the bottom as well. It's just really clever, simple play from Shane Thompson. It's what's taken him to the number one. This is so classy from him. It really is. Yeah, he looks at home, doesn't he? Yeah. It is his home, isn't it, out there? See if it gives us the MVG this time. Oh, Shane Thompson with another excellent break, break clearance. Back to back in the match for him. Carrying his team here. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> As we get underway with frame 10. Yeah, and looking at the match clock, you feel um, it's one that Australia need to put on the board. A dry break means Mike King gets to the table. Yeah, not a great split for Mike. Yeah, and you've got to watch that match clock. This is where experience with the match clock helps. And Mike hasn't had as much as others in his team at it. Yeah. One, that's opened things up a little bit. He's on the one at the bottom. It's just that one left to deal with. Obviously got the one at the top of the table as well, but at least it's open. Just try and open up that one last ball here. Well, if there's one thing you know about Mike King, it's that he's got one mode, and that is attack. Yeah, how good a shot was that, though, Chris? I mean, his margin of error on the shot he's just played was zero, and he is absolutely plum on this red. Does mean... He has a massive shot coming up here, though. Yeah, but from his point of view, not a great deal of, uh, of anything to do with the cue ball. I mean, uh, top it through a few inches, and then you've got sort of three drop-ins. So it's literally all on this, pot this, and, and you win. And he hasn't potted it. Turns the table two over to Australia. Yeah, tough shot. Really tough shot. The pressure of the match, it's a, it's a finish that you would normally expect um, Ben to take out, but with the pressure of the match as it is, you can see anything missed, can't you? See anything missed at the beginning of the match, let alone at this stage, <laughs> 2 minutes 38. We could well be going to a 6-red shootout, yet yeah, we could see either side 
win it. Australia still have time to win two frames. Remember the golden breaks in play. A lot can still happen out there in this final two and a half minutes. But what Australia play for this, play for the shootout. Take your 15 seconds on every yellow. What we do know though for Australia is Ben Noonan needs to take these out. If he doesn't, they will fall two frames behind. So this is big. It's just a little bit thin on the one in the middle. He might have to change his route here. Yeah, I think he's going to have to come up and down the table. He obviously needs to play for the um, yellow to the left of the eight as we look on the screen. So, um, yeah, he's going to have to come up and down the table here. Mm. I would have been tempted to play the one by the eight ball then. And, but he hasn't. He's gone into them and he could not have come out any better. Ben Noonan gets us all square once again. Mike King had his opportunities in the frame. He did not take them. And the Aussies are absolutely back in this. How is he going to be feeling right now with 1 minute 31 left on the clock here? Well, I can tell you, bang under it probably. <laughs> I'm feeling the tension here in the commentary box. I wonder how he's going. Oh, and they've not opened. The odds of the six red shootout have just increased. I don't think Alan's going to be too disappointed with that, to be fair. Considering it was dry, um, he's probably quite happy to see them all stuck together at the bottom of the table. Yeah, if you're going to be dry, this is what you want. So what we do know, Carl Sutton and Jake McCartney will be in the six red shootout if it does end that way. We don't know who they will be with. It will be the next players up. But does Sarvan Narka think he can find a big finish here? They are really tight, but you have to time it, don't you, so you don't give Aaron any chance. Oh, that's in. Oh, it's in. He, he can go. He can go here. Get your running shoes on then, Sarvan. Yeah, let's I mean, let's have it. Cannon the eight out here as well. Is he on anything? Mm, it goes long, I think. Does it slide by the red long? 30 seconds is enough time, but he has to pull out two big shots. <laughs> well, we've got what we want. Aaron's decided he's taken the shootout. We are going for a shootout here. What a match. Australia and England, absolutely incredible. Both teams treating us to some high drama, but we have more to come. Ready to get us underway. Not a great break, and she won't know what to do. Now they can go. Now it's six pots required, set a time. This is going to be competitive if they can pot these two balls. Excellent. Yeah. Sub 25, 24.95 on the clock. That will be confirmed. So here we go. And this perfect break. Right, right. Six pots wins it. A lot of movement on the cue ball on that first shot. Come on, boys. Jake misses. That could be huge. Now they have to go. It's still beatable. Oh, just off angle, so he's got to do something with the cue ball again. Oh, that miss is going to hurt them now. That's it, I think. Yeah. And they come up short. Just a couple of missed pots in there for Australia, and that hurts them. It is England pushed all the way to the brink, but they get over the line via a six-red shootout.